Howdy y'all, DJTJ here with RollToWound.com. On today's episode, I'm going to have Jonathan S. talking about his OBR and his 5-0 at the Lone Star GT. So, stick around. All right, today on this episode, we're going to have Jonathan Sleezus, Jonathan S. from Dallas, and he went uh, 5-0 and o at the Lone Star GT with um, OCR Bone Reapers. So, uh, Jonathan, please uh, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about uh, your playing, what you play, how long you played, and whatever else you want to say. Yeah, so, you know, I'm Jonathan. I like uh, long walks on the beach and Canada. Oh, wait, not that type of interview. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so, um, you know, I think kind of new to, to all the scenes. So I've been playing for about four years now with the, the Dallas defenders up here and homed out of a uh, Texas toy soldier, a uh, great bunch of guys uh, and gals. So, uh, you know, been switching back and forth between daughters and bone reapers and, you know, just really liking how the bone reapers play style. And it kind of, I think matches my, my thoughts and, and how I would, uh, you know, direct an army too, if I was at it. So, um, and yeah, so you're from Dallas and, um, here in, here in Texas, we have a Texas masters, um, sort of ranking. Um, I believe the projected rank for you coming up is you're in top 10. Um, I know we had some people run some numbers and that's not confirmed yet for, for the end of February yet, but the last time that I look, you're, you're looking like you're in top 10. You've done well at Hammerfest. You went, uh, tell me, correct me if I'm wrong. You went four and one in Austin. Mm-hmm. And you went five and zero oh here in uh, the Dallas uh, Lone Star GT, and you've taken OBR to all three of those, correct? Uh, I took uh, the last one. I took daughters, so I did. Uh, um, Houston was was Bone Reapers, and then I switched over to daughters for a bit, and then back That's to Bone Reapers. That's right, and. So we're going to get into Bone Reapers pretty deep, and I'll and I'll say this: the first time I met Jonathan was ooh twenty nineteen. 2018, yep. 2019, it's 2019. Slam, yeah, at the Slambo GT. Um, and I think we repaired at round two. You were playing Doc. I was playing, um, I was playing Corn, uh, Demons of Corn. And um, yeah, and Marathia put the hurt to me. And it was a fun game, but we had good conversations. It was, and it was like, uh, I met you, we got to talk and the sort of known you since then. I've seen you at most of all the GTs. So that's sort of how we know each other. And, you just been pretty much winning and winning since that day. Yeah. Somehow, some way I end up looking into a uh, four one. It seems to be my, where I sit at most of them. And I, I'm not really sure how, uh, you know, I, I like to, to uh, celebrate and praise my opponent's dice for most of it, but uh, I, I seem to squeak by. Well, there, there, you know, this is a game of luck, but it's also a game of skill. So if you're making four one and you're, and you're making five Oh at, uh, at turn at GTs and especially against the, the level of competition we have in Texas, it is, um, it's not just all luck. It's not just all bad opponent dice. You got to be doing something right. So yeah, yeah, biggest strategy, close your eyes when you roll your dice. That's my secret to success. Oh, don't tell me that because now I'm going to be throwing <laughs> dice all over the table. Um, there you go. All right. So before we get right into the meat of sort of your thoughts on bone reapers and stuff, and I'll have timestamps in here. So if you're just more interested in the, uh, the OBR assessment, we're going to start out with, since it's fresh in everybody's mind, we're going to start to talk about the Lone Star GT and your five Oh run. Um, you know, your general thoughts on the tournament, how was the Lone Star GT, you know, how you feel about it? What what you like? What you didn't like? I mean, it, it was local, so I didn't have to drive uh, four or five hours. So for 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 everyone coming in, especially the ones from like Montana and Colorado, like you know, big big kudos and you know, a well Texas welcome to 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 y'all and hope y'all y'all come back to see us. Um, I, I don't know that anything specific stands out other than I'm just glad to get back. Um, you know, I showed up uh, Saturday morning and looked around. It's like you know what. I think I know half of these people in some capacity and it's actually starting to feel really good. And then there's like half of them's like, you know, I've never seen these people before and I'm really glad that they're here. So the fact that even through the pandemic, um, you know, and having to travel across the state, like this is a pretty big community and, you know, that's what makes it fun. You know, the games, 
it's fun to play the games, but you could probably go do that anywhere, you know, but why do we keep coming back together? And that's just uh, all the fun we have when we're in one place at one time. I've echoed those sentiments many times. It's like, I've said this, like when you see people and, and you've got that random person that you haven't seen in a while and they just acknowledge you and say, Hey man, what's up dude. You know, and are you, you're able to meet a new person that you've seen several times and sit and have a drink. It makes all the travel. It makes the expense. It makes the time worth it. Um, my opinion. I, I mean, that's, that's what I do it for. If I was just showing up and trying to smash people's faces, then yeah, I wouldn't be doing that well. <laughs> Yeah, that's no fun. Um, all right, so I have a question because I, I I raised this question in um, I raised this question in our Discord here locally in Houston and the scoring format. Um, a little bit different than what we normally see in a lot of our normal GTs or any of our locals here. This was a cumulative accumulative points. So that means if I, if I score 20 battle points during the round and my opponent scored 25, he would win, but I would still keep all my points that would go into the pool and I could add to that. How do you feel about that uh, cumulative scoring? I know that there's differential scoring. There's a bunch of different ways we can score these AOS games. And especially as a, as a GT or tournament, um, what is your thoughts on cumulative points? I mean, it's swingy, right? Because depending on what army you play, it depends on who your opponent is. And of course, this this goes into to, to the overall scoring regardless. But, you know, if you get a particular juicy matchup where you can get, you know, 40 or 50 points, like that really kind of just sets you off on a trajectory that, you know, depending on what, what other matchups and, and battle plans are after that, it can be really hard to climb back. So not my overall favorite i do prefer like the differential where you know it's uh it's more contained so if i beat you by 50 or 30 you know you're i'm still potentially looking at capping out points or close to it um and then you know it comes it can come down to you know one two three four five points that really determine you know the the standings as opposed to like i think like i got third but i was 30 almost 40 behind i was definitely 40 behind first place and nowhere near second either so uh, I think had I lost that one, I think I would have dropped down to the the entire bottom bracket of four and one, which is 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 okay. Like you know, definitely you should get. There should be like a little sub sub some type of like sub rankings that help separate the pack, other than just four and one. Um, but uh, you know, cumulative. I mean, it was fun, um, but differential is still my my preference. Interesting. And, and and the majority of people have said that to me and I'm not against it at all. I enjoy the cumulative score be- just from the fact that it gives me something to fight for. Um, if you're losing games, if you're like, hey, I know I'm th- the writing's on the wall here, but I'm really going to play out hard to to make sure I get as many points as I can. And I think more importantly to me. Um, and I have this issue a lot in games is when we go to talk it out because that happens in all our games. Uh, well, mm-hmm. I say it happens in all my games where you get to that last four or turn five and the times right. you got to talk it out. And sometimes it's very cut and dry. You won the roll off. You can take monsters take over to take that point. Boom. It's done. Here's your points, you know, but sometimes it's a little more convoluted. And I think the biggest issue I have is when I'm faced with a choice to try to talk it out and then take something away from my opponent to give it to me or vice versa, take something away from myself to give it to an opponent because in differential or any other scoring metric, you're doing that. You're, you're saying, Hey, I'm going to take these points and therefore you're going to lose points in the standings or vice versa. If I want to be nice and say, okay, I'm not going to argue with you. You take the points, then I'm losing points for myself with cumulative points. Everybody wins in a sense where it's like, hey, you scored that. It's cool. I score this. You score that. I score this. Great. No, nobody's losing. And I think that's the one thing that appeals to me with cumulative points where I'm like, I'm not, I'm not making you have a worse day when you lose, I guess. But I just wanted to see, I've just been taking a census of that. And I think that, I think that the probably two thirds of people lean towards the direction of a differential because of like you're saying, the runaway games that you can't have. Right. And I guess another point, I guess, for, you know, cumulative is it, it gives a different, you know, factor as you're looking at your game and you're like, well, if I win by 20 or 30, that's, that's all I need. Like, I'll just go for that. But if it's cumulative, like, well, can I get 35? Can I get 40? If it's the type of game uh, that you can score that high, like it gives you something else to shoot for. It's like, well, do I just 
do I just win or do I do, do I just go all out and, and try to get as many points as I possibly can? Cause it, it matters across all five games instead of just the differential. Um, ultimately for me, as, as long as we know ahead of time, like, you know, take it as part of the, of the challenge of the tournament. And one of the things you have to consider. Yeah, it's a good, that's a good point you bring up too. All right. So we're going to switch into your list real quick and I'm going to throw it up on the screen. Um, so do you have a copy of your list? You want me to read it off? I know what I brought. I, I haven't forgotten just quite yet. All right. So I got your list up on the screen. And so just go over, um, go over your list and sort of just talk through your thought, your construction, what things are, you know, what you're taking things for. Yeah. So for me, Bone Reapers is all about surviving. Like uh, at the, the end of the, you know, the, the turn at the end of the round, the end of the game, it's like, my goal is to still be there while you're not. So I, I play not overly defensive, but my, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a wall, like, you know, keep hitting me, put some nicks into me. I'm going to, you know, repair it and come back while I continue to just whittle you down. So for me, there's a lot of uh, synergies and buffs that I really love. Um, Archon and Catacross, like, I just love the models. Like, I, I, I love the, you know, what they are as part of like the Bone Reaper lore. It's like, so I almost always take those. Um, I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever gone to a tournament without those two. Um, from there, the the other hero slot, I usually like to take one more just to not have a name hero. So I can use the uh, like artifact and command traits. Um, so Liege Cavalos, not only did he go down points not too long ago, but um, he's, he's, he's my mobility. So for him, um, you know, he, he moves 10 inches. Uh, he he's tanky. So with Catacross's buff, he's a two up save. Um, so I, I use him to run around, distract, you know, maybe tie something down um, because if he can live, I can, I can get him healed back up. Um, after that, more tech guard. Like you, you don't, you only have two choices, a battle line and the other one's not really that great. So you have to take more tech guard, but it doesn't hurt that they're probably one of the best, you know, if not the best, like you could have arguments, but they're, they're definitely top five of battle line in the game of just, you know, if, if you can take them, you take them. So uh, after that point, going along with my theme of how do I make sure that I'm still around after you're, you're, you're done is the harvester. So the harvester serves two purposes for me. One, um, you know, typically for bone reapers, more tech is your damage output too. So not only are they battle line, your defense, your screen, but they also do damage too. Um, the harvester hits like a truck, like, that that is the you know the the, the hammer that I, I like to swing around and just you know finish things up or you know make sure that something else doesn't get started in the first place. It doesn't hurt that they harvest everything. So something to think about is you know <clears throat> they can recycle uh, models within three inches that are slain and yeah you know, it's three inches not wholly within so that does give a little bit uh, extra room to, to grab them. But they can they can harvest uh, enemy models too, so it's just a slain model. So if the harvests are sitting behind a line of more tech, uh, not only can they reach over and hit, but they can recycle both sides of slain models to to heal up within six inches, which is pretty big. And then um, the last piece was something I've never taken to a tournament uh, was the crawler. It's like I think for me to survive, I need a long range threat. Um, I wanted to kind of have the theme of can I go hero sniping or can I you know, do some damage to large blocks before they really get into me so that to help me control the board and objectives. And let me tell you, it was, it was an MVP for me. Yeah. And I think most people, especially OBR players out there that have been playing for a while, the, the, the crawler is a love hate relationship. I mean, Definitely. there was points in time going back, especially at the end of second where seeing two on the board was not weird at all. And, now they sort of fallen out of favor, but I still see a, a super place for 200 points, you know, for 215, you're getting something that can reach board wide and it's pretty much like, here's five, 10 damage. Like, you you know, and with the shooting meta being what it is, most of those shooting armies, most of those sentinels, the, um, you know, the bow snakes, things like that don't have a great armor save. So your mm -hmm. odds of getting through that and taking out a quarter or half of the unit in one shooting is is legitimate so i'm i am also a fan in theory but of course when you 
the rolls and then they make their five up or six up armor saves. You're like, oh, it was a wasted shot. Why did I take this? I think that's the thing that people, a lot of people get into is when, when it doesn't do what it's supposed to, you're like, man, I could have just had more more tech guard. But, um, and I think the biggest, like at first I was the same way because, but I, I, I was thinking about it wrong. So, um, you know, they, they hit on twos, they wound on threes, three shots. You can give them endless duty for four with, with no problem as long as you have the, the right heroes. So I'm thinking, oh, well, you know, I should be doing like 10 to 15 damage, like almost every time. And it's like, no. Um, so I kind of scaled back. And you know what? You know, if I do that much, great. But I, I'm looking like I want to hit things that I want to be effective with it. So I'm hunting down things that are critical to my opponent's uh, army. But at the same time, it's like I only need one of these to go through. So, you know, thinking of it that way really changed my outlook and, and probably the use of it, too. To instead of trying to clear large things or do a ton of damage, I'm like, can I go hero sniping or something along that lines? I think it's a good use. It's, it's not. It is definitely not wrong. I will say that because there's so many there. There's so many armies that do have that little backline hero that is buffing mm-hmm. everything. And if nothing else, you're like, okay, boom, or it's extra damage to a uh, to something. Hey, because you don't think about this. Like even there's a lot of big monsters in the game that don't have a great armor save. And if you're like, hey, I'm trying to drop a Lord of Change or I'm trying to drop something else big with a four up or a five up armor save, shoot it at them because if they they flub their rolls. There's a potential 10 mm-hmm. to 20, you know, 15 damage on that. And it wipes a big model. And then they're just sitting there going, what happened? Um, yeah, that's exactly it. Cause even if you get a few through, especially on a monster, it's like, okay, did I degrade it? Did I knock it down? You know, what, what did I change that that monster could no longer do now? Just cause I got a couple through. So let's talk about uh, your opponents and your run to five zero. You don't have to go in super big detail, um, but if you can remember who's your first, your second, your third, your fourth, and your fifth round opponents. If you don't remember their name, um, shout outs to if you know them and um, just the armies they played. Sort of what did you go through to win five games at Lone Star? Yeah. So I, I definitely don't know last names, but first game was uh, Nurgle and uh, Allen, and I don't forget. I don't forget if he was from Austin or from from Slambo, but I I, you know, I even made the comments like I had never seen you before, and he's like, "I'm the quiet one." I'm like, "Oh, that's not the common, but you know, there there's always a quiet one." So we we talked a bit. Uh, he had a he had Nurgle. He had two great and clean ones uh, and out front. Like I never actually played Nurgle before. That was my first time ever playing it over any version of AOS. So he had a uh, two great and clean ones. One was the the named one, and then. Uh, like was it 60 what rock bringers or whatever his battle line is i, I don't remember but yeah like three groups of 20 um so first of all you know my thoughts as well i've never played nurgle and i've seen kind of how nasty their new disease point uh metrics can be and then i'm also happy it's like i'm not playing a shooting army like that that was my my first thought every time i saw who i was playing it's like is this a shooting army because that, that that really changes uh not, not only my outlook, but, you know, my game plan of what I can do. So um, the first one, uh, it went much like OBR wants to. Um, you know, we met in the middle and my defense survived your offense and my offense was enough to to eventually whittle them down. Yeah, that seems like a really good matchup for both. I can see it going for both sides on that because the grind, um, he's getting the ward save, he's getting the extra damage from um, the disease points, the, mm-hmm. extra, the you know the little chip damage. But you know you've got a six up ward most of the time. You got the harvester to bring stuff back. His shooting is minimized, so he can't reach on your back lines. So in on paper, you know the OBR should win out over that grind over long periods. And of course, if he's he's playing demons as opposed to uh, the um, Nurgle mortals, which tend to have a much higher damage output. So, yeah, and you know, it, it plays to the strengths of the list too. Is um, you know, I I love the debuff capabilities that Bow Reapers have. So, Catacros is putting minus one to hit on you know a unit that once you get in range of the Bone Tide Nexus, it's putting or it's attempting to put minus one onto a unit. Um, Archon and his Drain Vitality is like, uh, if something's in range, I'm using Drain Vitality uh, no matter what. So that's one of my core buffs I like to throw out there. And then uh, I also like to throw out Mortal Contract too when I've got a spell that you know I could really do anything with. Uh, Mortal Contract over the course of the game can, can really change how, how things play out. And so you got to win on game one, and that was Savage Gains. You're going to Survival of the Fittest game two. And 
what army did you go up against? Uh, sons of Behemoth. Did I say that right? Behemoth, Behemoth. Yeah. 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 I just, giants, sons, sons, giants, and megas. Yeah. I, I went against sons. So, uh, you know, first of all, I'm like, they're, they actually have the damage output to get through me. Um, but again, not a shooting army. Uh, so it's like, well, let's see what could happen. So um, I, I played the the GT back in July. Uh, the Lone Star opened back then. I played Giants twice. I won one, lost one, but never played Giants before then. But I learned a lot of good tactics. One was to make sure that my uh, Hecatos was out of range of them grabbing it once they got into combat. So he couldn't remove my ability to do shield wall um, or anything else before uh, that way I could make sure that they stayed buffed. Um, I think, yeah, let me just stop right there. Guys, yeah. that was a super great piece of OBR information right there. Make sure your Hecatos is out of range of the giant, uh, stuffing in sacks or throwing, right? And then to do that, you got to be outside how many inches? Three, three many? inches. Yeah. Right. And that's a, that's a good piece of tech because if not, you would have to have an HQ hot, far enough up to catch that whole bubble. Correct. To give to give well, them shield wall. No, nothing else can give them shield wall is a more tech guard war scroll uh, ability. So nothing else can give them shield wall except for that hecatos. Oh, see that, that that's super good. That is good tactics right there. All right, yeah. I'm sorry. Keep going. Yeah. So um, with that, um, you know, uh, another thing too that was pretty evident across all the games is instead of going all in with the the more tech guard to make sure as I could get as many hits as I I could. It was making sure I left the blob back that was within three inches of the harvester. So I always, I always got at least the four, the the chance to roll a four up to bring it back. So it was about survivability. Um, and then uh, crawler, uh, crawler did some damage. Mortal, uh, mortal contract, I think, took out a uh, when the the battle line, the man gargant crusher, uh, uh, the the man eaters, the man crushers. Yeah. yeah, it took out one of those like almost by itself. Uh, just because it, you know, would shoot and take damage and charge and take and then take damage and then attack and take damage and there was one gone. Um, so for that one, um, you know, being able to remove those and I didn't, it kind of worked out in my favor was I ended up removing one and then the next battle round moved, I removed the rest, but because it happened in two different battle rounds, was able to squeak out a couple extra points for monsters. And then at that point it came into uh, focusing down on one giant between um, spells and the crawler and getting the harvester in to, to really do some damage. And then um, Catacros can be pretty tanky himself. So Catacros took a, another giant to just stonewall and, and keep occupied while he started to whittle it down until uh, the, you know I was able to kind of just sweep across the board and, and get them all off. And and that's kind of what it's almost a most people's strategy with giants is you you've got to tie a few up and you've got to focus fire the rest and and if you don't have the amp damage output to drop one and a half or two in a single turn then you have to have some way to deal with the other ones while you whittle one down and I think that that is sort of a shortcoming of OBR especially a Martek guard heavy is that Martek guard can put out a good quality attack right but you know how much can you get through can you get through 15 or 20 a turn like can you can can a block put out enough to drop a mega and it can be a little dicey at times i think it it can if but i have to think am i shield walling or am i giving it endless duty um if i was petrifax is it, am i shield walling or am i giving it the bonus to rend it's like basically it comes down to am i shield walling and going to make sure i can uh you know stand up to as much damage as I possibly can, or am I trying to go all out to, to make sure I just take it down in the first place? Um, and I will add to, so that was against Chris Long, I believe his last name was, is of any of the games, I feel for Chris's dice, like he had horrible roles. Like, you know, I joke about it earlier, but he, he really did had, he had horrible roles uh, when he really needed them to. And, uh, you know, that was a, a real game changer to allow me just, you know, he would take out two or three or four and, they would, you know, mostly come back and then they would just keep sweeping through them. All right. So you got to win game two uh, against yep. Suns. You're moving on to game three, the vice, which can be a little dicey for OBR because you're generally considered a slower army. And I, and I won't agree with that assessment at, 
necessarily on paper on the war scroll you're a little slow but there's ways to run so in a normal standard 19 or 18 or 24 inch deployment like it's not that bad you can actually move up the field quite a bit but the vice that kind of puts you in this list on the back foot how did you who did you play and how did you deal with that so that's that's kind of odd i love vice as obr um with my list um and a few things so i played keith wood and his iron jaws Uh, he's another dallas guy I uh, played him a few times before. Always see him at the tournaments. Love, you know, when we get to see their chat or play against that. Uh, so, you know, I, I really like uh, Keith is a really phenomenal guy and player. So, um, and then I, I, I do want to preface that that Keith chewed through a lot of my army too. So I, I want to make sure I, I give him a shout out to that. Because at this point, through two games, I'd only lost to Leech Cavalos. Everything else was was on the board. Um, and Keith chewed through a lot of my army before it finally came to the end. So, so with Vice, um, you know, both armies have to start back. So, and this one, Iron Jaws had a little bit of a an advantage because they're they have they they are pretty quick, um, especially with Mighty Destroyers. But OBR is deceptively fast. So yes, on paper they're slow, four or five inches, except you know four or five or six inches, except for a few pieces. But I can unstoppable advance all of them. So right off the bat, all of them get another three inches. So now you're looking at seven, eight, and nine inches, which you know, they can still charge after that. So it doesn't prevent that. So they're deceptively fast. And usually I've got RDP plenty to spend on that. So it's not like I'm having to only do one or two. Like I can do it on, on everyone, especially if I'm not doing combat uh, with plenty of points to spare over. So, but with that too, um, you know, I want the crawler in the very back because he shoots 36. So there's no reason to, to really get him up close. So I've got that one that can sit back. Uh, the Leech Cavalos moves 10, Archon moves 16. So I've got plenty of units that can sit back. Uh, you know, to take it and then just keep moving forward and keep up with the army while the army's, you know, gunning for that ultimate, you know, fourth round where it's in the middle, only one objective. And, you know, that's what OBR loves to say, let's just sit on one objective and fight and see who, uh, who's standing after the fifth round. And yes, they, in, in a, in a straight melee battle, shield wall, Mortet guard, harvester, catacombs, all the bringing back. Yeah. That, that ends up going in your favor a little bit. All right, so you you come out of of day one three and zero. Oh, you're going into game number four, and who who are you facing? And this so, was going to be the veins, so veins of girl. Right, so that was David and his legions of prince, another Dallas guy. Uh, that's one thing I hate about the GTs is when you end up playing the. Not only you play the people that you play at your local tournaments, but it's like I don't want to take it. You know, I don't want to knock or potentially knock you know someone from 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 the defenders down. So. Uh, you know, it's, it's always rough when you end up playing Dallas uh, or your, your home, your home team, but it, they're always fun games. Um, you know, th- you get a little bit more cause you've played them before. So, you know, you could, the things you can chat about are a little bit different and uh, you can really have some fun. So it was uh, David and his Legion of the first Prince. Um, so with that one is uh, we, we kind of just stood in the middle, which I knew would happen. None of us came forward. We kind of threw out some buffs. Um, my crawler picked off his blue scribe. Uh, in my first turn, which was, was, which was nice. So didn't have to worry about that, that piece at all. Um, but then after that, um, you know, the, the first point came down on the far right side of the board. Um, he moved over there with some things to take it. Um, I took, you know, I, I moved up just a block of 10 to take it back and with some shooting from the crawler, um, just to hold it and see what would happen. Um, and then, uh, you know, the, Fortunately for me, I left all but just that block of ten in the in, in the middle, and then the other two points on our our sides came on the other side of the board. So um, he ended up like you know he had moved Bellacor all the way over to take it. Like he really went onto that point. Um, I think by the the third turn there was twenty pink horrors on that point with Bellacor, and it's like there's no way I can ever take this back ever. I can't do that damage. So. Um, but you found what? yourself in position to to move back and retake the, the the basically the rest of the board that was left somewhat open, right? So I I, I got the the priority. I was able to go because there's there's no burning on this one. So I got the priority. I was able to to, to just run straight over to the other sides, uh, hold my point. I wasn't able to immediately get on his point, but I was able to set it up to get there. Um, and then I was able to get um, one block of my ten um, with a really good because one thing you can do is. Um, unstoppable advance you can use that when you retreat um it's not a run uh you can just adds three inches to your movement so you can and they even clarified in the, the last faq 
you can is either that or the white dwarf. I'm pretty sure it's FAQ that you can use it when you retreat. So I was able to get to get them out of combat, you know, bring them back to full health and screen off like his 20 pink horrors to really keep them locked on one side of the board. Um, so at that point, it came down to is can I get my models over there? Can I keep them screened off to prevent him from really getting over it? It came down to for me, it was um, I, I didn't do it purposely to such precision. But, um, you know, I kind of I had just my models placed in such a way that um, he was going to try and bring Bellacore over, you know, was, yeah, run him full of was like 20 inches, 22 inches, then summon for, for another nine to try and run up and take my points. Um, but I had him locked out pretty tight. So he I think we, we measured it. He could drop something in, but it would need like a 12 inch starge. But then it'd have to get through through Archon on the point. Um, with a, a block of Mortec guard not too far away to, to to clean them up if it if it didn't go my way. So, and going back to that comment, you know, you see that, and it's always a, a groan. It's a friendly groan when you see that draw, and it's like, yeah. dude, I just played you last week. You know, it's like yeah. we go to GTs. We, we it's not necessarily we don't want to play our local friends. It's more of like, man, I drove all the way here to play other people, and it's like now I'm playing you. And especially if they, you know, in my case, most of the time, it's like, man, I got a horrible record against you. I don't want to play you again. I want to play somebody new. Um, yeah. So yeah, I would tell go ahead. I would say, yeah, I mean, that's that's half the joy of going is just getting to play someone completely new, seeing someone completely new, you know, kind of making a new friend in the community that next time you you both show up, you can say hi and talk about, you know, the last games you played or whatnot. You know, that's half the fun of going. All right, so we move into the final game of the tournament for you, and you're four and zero at this point, and the list of people that are four and zero are pretty. It's a pretty solid list at that point. It's like a lot of a lot of names that if you look in the top 100 in the AOS, you know any metric you want to measure, those names are all popping up. And so, who did you get mes- matched up with? A game number five. So I got another defender, so I Caleb Hastings uh, with his Seraphon, and. Um, Pretty much at that point, like, you know, you know, some luck, some, some tactics, some playing armies that, that really, that, uh, that are kind of bone reapers are kind of favored against, depending on how things shake out. And then I'm like, oh, Seraphon, I played them before at the local tournament, not with bone, but I played them with my daughters. It's like, uh, Thunder Lizards, I'm familiar with what he can do. Um, and I'm thinking like, <sighs> they're not a heavy shooting army. It's not like they're, uh, you know, Marathi bow snake shooting or Lumineth or something like that, but they, they can shoot a lot. They can do a lot of damage. So I'm like, this pun's probably not going my way. Um, that and the fact that it was a six objective game, which again, does not play to bone reapers favor because it's just too many points to, to try and to manage. And the, and the mission was feral for Ray. And just to comment like Caleb Hastings, a great guy. If you guys, if anybody listening plays Seraphon, you already know who Caleb Hastings is. He has a channel. He does all the Seraphon content. He's uh one of the best ca- Seraphon. <laughs> it's hard to say that because, you know, we got some really top tier players that are switching in and out in Seraphon, but I will say consistently one of the top Seraphon players you're going to find in this part of the world. And you're facing him and all his, um, all his mortal wound chip damage. And I, I will agree that Feral Foray, especially your, your, you know, your, your drop count is low and you want to keep some synergy synergies with a um, catacross and the rest. So it does make it a little rough. So how did you, how did you come through on this match? Um, so I'm an eight drop, like, you know, there's not really the, the, one of the things with, with bone reapers is taking catacross and archon. There's not a whole lot of battalions you can use. Uh, more than just one, so uh, because the the wound count for the, your two heroes. So I've just got hunters on my Mortec. Um, I'm an eight drop, so I'm always you know I, I'm at the whim of my opponent as to whether I go first or not. So he he set up, you know, he gave me first, which is definitely the the right thing to do. Um, you know, there's there's one thing I get that going first that you know he could have avoided, but you know the the threat of the double turn is just so huge, especially for for what his army can do. Um, so uh, first thing is like, I'm just, my thoughts is, you know, I'm going to sit on three points. I'll let him have three points and let's just see how things shake out. Um, so first thing I do, uh, you know, I buff up what I can. Um, and again, uh, so that's one of the big things about Catacross is, you know, for an RDP, it's, uh, and as long as he's at uh, full health, uh, or I guess at least uh, 17 wounds is, uh, 
is that a 36 inch bubble of plus one safe. Um, so we can talk about Petrofax minus one Ren versus plus one safe. Um, I've got definitely some thoughts on that, but you know, that, that makes my whole army a three up or a two up. Uh, Archon can put a mystic shield on a unit to make them, you know, uh, like a three up ignoring one rend. So at that point, I'm just going to sit here and, and see how things shake out, but I've got my crawler in the back. He can't reach it. He can't shoot it, but I can shoot him. So I, you know, I talked with him, you know, he's got the two, uh, uh, heroes in his, uh, terrain, um, garrisons. And it's like, well, we talked about which one can do It's like, okay, well I took a stab at the one that had the worst, uh, safe pretty much just to, to see if I could knock it out. And, uh, I was able to get one to slip through. He didn't make any of his ward saves. And so that's turn one is I'm sitting on the points. I'm buffed up. And one of his heroes is down. Yep. So, uh, from there, um, he didn't get, uh, to double turn. Um, so same strategy. So you, he kind of moved around. He started taking some, some shots at, at my guard to see what he could do with it. Um, he, he brought his, uh, general around two to take some shots. So he, he did end up wipe, not that one, but, uh, three, he ended up wiping out my, uh, my leech Cavalos, which is I, at the time I thought was a pretty big hit to me, but I was able to take out his other priests and the, uh, the terrain. Um, and at that point he was down to just his general and the salon, which are still pretty, pretty major pieces, but losing those two, those two heroes, uh, really took a lot of bite out of his army. Um, he, he kind of ended up out of bubble to shoot twice. I think for at least a few rounds, he lost like his plus one to hit. So Catacross's minus one to hit was really hitting hard. He lost his ability to like run and char, uh, run and, uh, run and still shoot. So, um, he lost a few things that were really, uh, you know, important to, to him being able to, to get on and, and capitalize, like doing a double turn or really being able to stick some damage to me. So, um, from there, uh, we just, we just played it out. Um, and things just started to slowly swing my way. Um, I was able to get, a uh, you know, a couple of battle tactics with the monster, uh, taken care of, which added a few points. I was able to finally get his general, um, which took a few points. Um, he did burn one of my points which really set me back, uh, uh, two objectives to his three, so I had to go to his side, but I was able to really funnel the the big block of Mortec in, uh, tie up his Basilodon, so the Basilodon had to shoot my Mortec guard, but any damage he had was well within the range of the the harvester to to recycle, um, and then I was just able to I didn't do I didn't do any damage to either of his Basilodons the whole time, but I was able to funnel through on one side, um, get the Archon in there to to clean up some of his battle line and take a point. I was able to get the guard to the other side and take the point. Um, and then just because uh, his Basilodon tied up with Mortec guard, couldn't really cut through it. And his other one had permanent minus one hit from Catacross uh, every round. I was able to kind of weather the storm. And uh, by the, when they, the dust finally settled at the end of the game, um, I had a three point win. Oh, I mean, that was, yeah, that's, that's a close. And you, you're basically using what OBR does the best to your advantage and making him play you, not you play him necessarily. And I think locking up the, uh, taking away the double shot from the Bastillodons and did, cause you took away the, the shoot twice with getting rid of the priest, right? Or do you still have that with his general? Uh, at one point, like he, he, he had it from, I believe he still had it from his general, but he charges general around to, to try and take out my liege and to capture one of my points and burn it quickly too. Um, so uh, for one round that, that pulled him out. Um, and then he wasn't able to get his salon back around. I think he at like round four or five, he got a range of his salon to use it. Um, but at, by that point, it, it wasn't really, uh, you know, I, I had my, my numbers were still there and um, his were starting to dwindle. Well, it's like a super good run. And obviously, when everybody goes to GT, and I know if like I look at it from an average player perspective, I'm not one of these top guys that's going to like, oh, I'm going for, you know, 4150. That's what my expectation. I'm an average guy. And, and, I, and as an average player, I always know that, hey, it's all missions and matchups and dice rolls at the end of the day. And, you know, that one mistake that you make will haunt you, or the one mistake that your opponent make can, you know, win you the game so i think that that's sort of like you know we can all sit here and go you know if we played that tournament 10 more times you might you might have got a different matchup at some point and didn't get get that same for everybody so don't take this that obr is the new hard counter to seraphon but i don't know absolutely maybe maybe take that maybe that is the deal all right
you went 5 0 at the tournament. Is there anything, any closing thoughts on uh, the Lone Star GT? Any shout outs you want to give out to any anybody and any uh, any things you want to uh, say with that tournament? I, you know, big shout outs to the, the, the ones that ran it, you know, Matt Taylor, Brian Henderson, uh, goat and Pandy. I know he was there helping out with the painting contest. Uh, you know, the fact that they not only give out a huge amount of time, like I don't run tournaments, so I, I don't know the, the sheer scope of what it takes to do that, but I can only imagine the sheer amount of time that they have to not only invest in that, but then they don't get to play in the tournament too. Um, so the fact that they're willing to, to sacrifice themselves for the sake of all of us, so that goes to, to the rest of them too that run the the various gts and locals is like i mean what, what, without you what would, what would we do like get together like every you know once a month and just play like one game at a at a, a game store and call it done like we wouldn't have this huge community that we have uh other than that you know shout out to the ones that i didn't get to play that or didn't get to say hi to that i have before and welcome to anyone who was new and showed up and hope you liked us enough to keep coming back yeah, I think, you know, my overall opinion of the Lone Stars, the guys in Dallas, they, they do a great job. And I, I'll echo your sentiment on people that run it. I've not ran anything in many, many, many years because I want to play in it more than <laughs> anything else. But it, if somebody doesn't run it, it doesn't get run. And like you said, we're playing a single game here or there. We're playing, you know, beer hammer in our garage or something. That's great and fine. But for a competitive end, it's you, somebody's got to step up and do it. So shout out to all the uh, TOs out there. We should make a national TO day. And Absolutely. Send them flowers. What is it? February 25th, February, the date of recording, February 25th is national AOS TO day from here on out. All right, guys, we're going to move into more of a tactical talk of OBR. So um, if you sort of skip past all the other uh, GT stuff, we're going to get into the meat of this army in its current state of um, of AOS 3.1, 3.0, 3.5, whatever people's calling it right now. So we're going to start with the big question. Currently, where do you feel OBR sits in the meta? Is it S tier, A tier, B tier? Is it garbage? What do you think? I mean, every army is like this. It's like, well, what am I playing? And that'll determine my tier. Uh, you know, some are more generous than others. Uh, I still think Bone Reapers, they're, they're, they're definitely matchup dependent. Like you, in any given Sunday, you can, you can win depending on how things go. But um, you know, they don't stand up to, typically they don't stand up to the, the S armies, especially the ones with shooting or the, the, the big A armies that have shooting because they, they, they can't stomach through that. Like a lot of their abilities uh like shield wall doesn't work in the shooting phase so they can't stand up to that so if they're a b they're definitely at the top of the b if they're an a then they're at the very bottom but you know uh we'll see how things shake out because i think they may be getting a new book here soon too so you know we'll, we'll see how they go and that's a great assessment and you actually articulated that very well i think it's you're pretty right it, it, it is matchup dependent they i would call them an a if you're playing another um sword and board type army but yeah the uh, shooting army or maybe something maybe like a zinch that can put out a ton of mortal wounds that can sort of get past a lot of that shield wall and uh, maybe they sort of drops them down but i wouldn't put them at the bottom of b that is for sure um, no, no. I, th I, th I think with the the white dwarf, the minor little fixes that have been done have took it because if you people remember back in 2.0, they were the big boogeyman on the block. You couldn't beat them like they were just scary. No one wanted to play OBR. In fact, it was probably like the lumineth of 2.0 at there at the end. And then when 3.0 came out, it became OBR's unplayable. It was it got to the point where it was like you can play it, but it don't work. And then they sort of fixed it through some FAQs and some white dwarfs. And I think now they're sitting in a really good spot. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we, we, we could spend, you know, hours talking about the things I would love to see OBR be able to do that. They probably shouldn't be able to, that would put them into a S tier for sure. But they, they definitely took a hit um, at 3.0. They've definitely gotten a step back up. So I guess we'll see where the, the future that goes with games workshop and where they want to take them to. Uh, as to whether they get, I don't think they'll get worse, but you know, there's, you know, they could, they could definitely get better or be a lot more competitive in general. 
I, and I think too that that a lot of people have even echoed this, especially when 3.0 came out. That there they were the prototype 3.0 army with all the command abilities and different mm. things. And I and I kind of agree. I think that they were a sort of a test run and say, hey, the, this is what we can do with it. And then they sort of used those abilities and, and morphed it. And I know. Okay, I'm going to ask you a simple. I, I call it simple, but if somebody walked up to you that was new to the game and said, Hey, I'm looking at OBR. What's their play style in one or two words. How would you tell them this is OBR's play style? Turtle. A turtle. So yeah, if you're familiar with games, you know, uh, maybe defense games or, you know, army games, like they're, they're kind of a turtle. Like they, they're there to soak up damage and, and outlast your opponent. I, I like it. I was thinking I had anvil written down at a castle, but it, it falls into that. I do believe that's what they are. Yeah. They are a brick. They are a brick that you have to bust through. And, and, you know, and I will say with OBR, once you can sort of get that, those dominoes falling, it, it can go quick at times. Yeah. But then again, Hey man, five more tech guards sitting on a point. If you get them down to five, that's not, that's not an easy day. That's not a guarantee. I'm going to send one unit over there to go take it. Cause you might not kill a single one. Right. And, you know, I mean, minimum's 10. So there's definitely 10, but the chances are if, depending on who goes next, is they could all come back. Um, I, I was going to describe them a bit different, but you gave me a one or two word limit. So that went out the, I was all trying right. to stay what, in your what boundaries. Is your, what, what is your so, long, what's your long description of OBR? A place. So I, I was going to call them a castle with like a reverse attrition. So if you're sitting at the castle walls, instead of like you wearing down the people inside, they're just wearing you down. So okay. they're, they're going to stand there. They're going to stand firm and, for most armies, like you're going to start to slowly bleed away as they, they, they kill you, but whatever you kill, they just keeps coming back. And it, it, this is true. All right. So let's talk about list building. Let's get into some more meat of these guys. When you're list building, what are you most keyed in on doing? So I'm like, I'm sitting down, I'm building a list. What, you know, with Zinch, maybe I want to summon a lot, or maybe I want to spit out mortal wounds. When you're building OBR, personally, you, what are you keyed in on trying to, to do with your list? So uh, synergies, I'm trying to find out what synergies. So, you know, Archon and Catacross are almost a given for me. I have contemplated taking one out, but I'm not really sure what I would place it with. So it's like, how do I make best make use of Archon and Catacross? Well, Archon's magic, but he's also healing. You know, Catacross has some some great debuffs. He can do some damage. He can, you know, be a... He can stonewall, you know, a unit or two, depending on what they are, um, but he heals too. So it's like, well, how, you know, to me, that's that's taking the guard because they're the cheapest battle line. Um, and then my thoughts, adding in the harvesters, how do I make sure that I can keep coming, these, these guys coming back turn after turn um, and keep them alive so that, that I can keep doing that. And then, you know, hopefully as turn by turn goes, they, they keep staying at full health or close to full health as they, they slowly overtake the other side. Um, so definitely synergies. I know most people will say like, you know, everyone has to have a role, but you know, I, I really do need uh, that. But because my play style is kind of like, hey, let me sit in the middle and you come take it or let me force you to me. I, I do want to have a piece that's mobile and I'm not flying Archon around um, anywhere at all. So for me, the, the Lees really fills that gap that I used to put the Death Riders in. Um, so for he, he's my, my, my mobile piece to go around. Um, and just, you know, kind of be annoying with them. I don't really expect too much other than just kind of live for a few rounds. Uh, but he's also a nice RDP generator. So that's another thing, too, is depending on what you build your list with and what you have, you can go through your RDPs. Uh, and that's uh, one of the reasons I wanted to take Mortis Praetorian this time. Um, and then just fill out. I wanted to give the Crawler a try this time. So it's like I cut down on the guard. Um, I subst- And I took out the uh, usually I would take two 20 blocks and like five Death Rider. So. I cut that down to, to 120, 210s, and then it's like, okay, I can fit the crawler and let me see how um, what I can do to just pester and be annoying. And a lot of it, what it is, is I just want to I want to be annoying and try and force your hand to do things that you don't want to do, and then let me see how well I can react to that. Okay. The other thing I want to pull out of that is you said you don't run Arcan around the board. That's an interesting tactic. A lot of times when I played people with OBR and even myself early on, Arcan, it was, since he's so fast, you want to run him and move him, but you're using him more as a centered buff piece. Is that correct? Yeah. So, you know, one, his, his 
he can heal four units up to three wounds each, uh, but that's wholly within 24 inches. So I want him center to, you know, if um, a guard unit or an outlier unit gets out of range, so be it. But for the most part, I want him to be able to heal as many wounds as he possibly can. Same thing for Catacro. So uh, Archon, I want in the middle. He's only a four up save. He's only 11 wounds. Um, sure, he gets a six up ward. Uh, Catacros can drop him to a three, but most shooting can chew right through that without an issue. So I, I want him safe uh, and, and back. And then later in the game, when things are starting to shake out, and especially if I've got units tar pit with the guard um, and I can start to move Archon around freely, then, then I'll do so. But for the most part, he, he stays back and centered. Um, you know, he's also a monster too to kind of take to sit on back objectives just in case they want to summon or something like that. Um, you know, not a lot of summon units could probably chew through Archon or make it make, you know, sort of like bringing in pink horrors or something like that. But, you know, he can sit there, hold the objective through that too. All right. So I'm going to ask you a couple of tough questions in a row. My first tough question is right. You can only the uh, let me say this the one war scroll you must include in every every obr list you have to include this every list you build the one war scroll you have to have if i'm building a list what is it the guard i mean they're 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 your they're one of two choices for battle line but i don't i don't i don't see if you want to be competitive i don't see a list working with all death riders uh, there are too many points so it's guard but but i feel like that's an easy answer um to me, it's oh, hard. I, I've got, I've got oh. a harder, I've got a harder one coming okay. up next. Now, first, I want to stop you right there. I have a fully painted two thousand point Starly Arc Lord. I know. <laughs> I, I threw out, th I threw it out there for 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 a numerous reasons. <laughs> and one day I will bring them back to the table, and they will ride in glory and go across the board. All right, so th that wrong. is that is an easier question. I think you were leading into to the follow up to that first one, which was okay. If it's not more tech guard. Because we are all taking them. What is the the auto include? For me, it's the harvester. Uh, it's not only is it a, a hammer and it can do a lot of damage to include mortal wounds. It's got some shooting, which you know is always helpful to kind of op open something up or, or remove a screen or, or do some damage like that way. But it, it's the biggest part of why the guards stick around is the harvester keeps uh, spitting them right back out. So you got that, guys, right now. Then go out and buy your guard. Go out and buy your harvester. You've got the start of your army. Now, here's a little bit harder question for you. Um, you've talked about how much you love Catacross and Arcan. You can only take one when you build your army. Which one are you taking and why? If I could sit down and work through, you know, an endless supply of different variations of lists, um, I could probably come up with the reasons to take both. If I had to pick one right now, uh, Archon is staying in the army and Catacross is going. Um, being able to have that magic superiority for the most part, being able to get his debuffs off, he's got the better, he's got the, he can heal more units. Um, he's He's got that faster. He's a monster. So it's especially important in 3.0. Um, and Catacross is 485 points. I can do a lot of things with that to include more guard, another harvester. Uh, I can do quite a bit with with that amount of points. And and I think I kind of echo that. Um, Arcan is on. Um, he does so much. He's a lot of utility. Uh, Catacross does a lot too. This is this is a, a really hard choice. And I think you could build around either one and be happy. Um, but yeah, I like the speed, the, the the spell versatility. Of course, spells don't necessarily go off. Catacross is more of like what you get is what you get. And um, mm. this and I think one thing that's underrated when we talk about Catacross is his stealing of a CP. Yeah. That, you know, how many times, especially you get late in a game, especially if a general is slain, when you get deep into a game and taking away a, a CP from an opponent is, in my opinion, in 3.0 is huge because people are so dependent on that um, at this point. That, that is, I mean, that, that can be game changing. So think, you know, they go first in the turn, they get, they only get one CP, uh, they get an extra one if their general's still there, then maybe they roll for four. Well, the way Catacross ability, it just, it's per turn. And it's just when your opponent gets a CP, you could roll the steal it. So you, it doesn't have to be in the hero phase, but when else, you know, why, why wait any longer than that? Um, but it's just a four up and one of those CPs is gone. Now it's like your plans of all out attack and the shooting and then all out attack or defense and the, 
the combat and then save one for inspiring presence. Now that's at the door. You've got to cut one of those out. Yep. So I've talked to you in categories. Cool. Um, <laughs> I'm still taking Archon. <laughs> Yeah, and I and I think that's a viable. And to be one hundred percent honest, if if you're if you're worried about the points heavy, maybe you could add in something else. You want a little bit more board presence. Cutting either one of those still works, and I think it's still a viable OBR army. All right, so let's talk about some matchups. Um, let's say that you're going to tomorrow. You're going to go to a tournament, and your your opponent is going to bring this army what is the army you're the matchup you're most scared of you don't want to see across from you as an obr player it's going to be anything shoot heavy um lumineth with a bunch of sentinels it's going to be um i don't particularly like daughters of cain um they they shoot a lot they do some mortal wounds and and i can't shoot Mar through marathi normally like i can most units uh, she can stick around so she can tarp at me um trying to think you know I, I don't I don't typically like Seraphon um, because um, again not only do they have the shooting but with the, the the summons so you know that would probably be the second tier is anything that can summon effectively um, I, I'm deceptively quick but once I get into the middle and get locked down I can't move around after that so if you can summon and force me to to look at a bunch of different things then I'm I'm usually in trouble because I can't get to I, I can I can go in one direction but I'm typically not coming back by the time the, the game is over with. So, so it's definitely anything that shoots, and then after that, it's effective summoning. All right. So basically, I didn't hear any of that. I quit listening after you said uh, Lumineth Sentinels. So good. I agree. <laughs> no, <laughs> I think that's everybody's bane. And in and, and the current meta, when you're playing any kind, and, and especially death, if you're a death player out there, and, and, and to, a, to a large extent, um chaos everybody that's not order it seems like if you're you're playing you're setting up against a strong shooting army there's a lot of armies that aren't geared to be able to deal with that and obr is one of them that where they can i don't care about your your endless supply of mortet guard because i'll just shoot over them and kill all your characters and then you exactly can back. so all right one army if you if you line up, you feel really confident, and and it can you know obviously this is all generals. We're just looking at straight on the paper. You line up against, um, and you say, okay, I've I'm good going against them. I'm I'm confident against this army. What is that going to be? Beast of Chaos before their last latest oh, FAQ. Oh <laughs> It'll, unless Gavin's playing them, and then you. I mean that's fair. Um, so, it, I don't know that one army like calling out specific army it's anything that you don't have a lot of mortal wound output and you you don't have high damage um and you're 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 not shooting so you know i, I typically like iron jaws uh double i've double maw crusher could be probably a bit much because i think they're going to just ignore the guard and go for all of the support pieces in which case the guard is irrelevant um but you know you know a bunch bunch of bunch of pigs I, i'm generally happy to see that because i think i can prep myself to i may lose a few units um but i can definitely hit you back and then once those are gone what's left uh, yeah and and iron jaws are like that they hit so hard that they can they can they can literally table you in a turn mm -hmm. um it, it like turn one they could wipe out 80 or 90 percent of your army if it goes their way but as soon as you start hitting them back and their pieces start falling so if they don't get through that shield wall then they're in a bad state and i think that that, that might be a good pick for that top tier i should have i should have framed the question what you know top tier armies competitive high competitive armies is a good matchup um but I, I agree. How have you been faring? Have you got to play much Soul Blight um, with your OBR? And how has that worked out if you have? Um, I think I've had like two games. I'm sure I've played Chris Keitch once or twice. Uh, he, he's local to me. So we, he's probably the person I played the most. Um, and then I, I got a chance to play. Um, well, no, I, I played Matt Robish, but I was Daughters at the time. So I want to say as Bone Reapers, I think maybe just a few games against Chris. So not a whole lot. All right, yeah, that everybody should know that name. Chris has been on the channel, and he beat me down game <laughs> one of the Lone Star. A good player, and running the Castle Eye. All right, um, 
So we already talked about strong counters. We talked about shooting high mortal wound volume. So that is stuff that you sort of look out for. And it's kind of funny, even going back to um, 2.0 early third, um, I was running Zinch at the time and OBR was so strong. And you would think that Zinch is a decent counter for OBR. And it kind of is, unless you're taking more tech crawlers because crawlers are Zinch's worst nightmare because everything generally has a, all the heroes have a low armor save and mm. a low wound and it's pretty much like hey i'm going to kill your lord of change or i'm going to kill your fate weaver with my catapult and it's a legitimate threat that you are sitting there going i'm i'm spending destiny dice to not make that happen um horrors you're like hey it's a tar pit i can't get through it but then again the horrors aren't doing any damage to the guard that much and the guard is just killing 10 15 horrors a turn and eventually wears them down um so when we're looking at OBR and, and mission specifically, is there any mission that you're like, hey, the mission pops up. What kind of missions do you like? What kind of missions do you not like? So as far as the ones I don't like, those are any of the ones that have six objectives. I don't know the names off the top of my head, but if if there's more than like three points that I really need to focus on just to be able to hold one, hold two, hold more. I'm generally in trouble because then I'm getting away from my support. I'm getting out of my heal bubble or I'm, you know, getting to the point where you can kind of pick and choose where you go, especially if you're a lot faster than me. And I just can't, I can't be all over the board like some armies can. Um, as far as the ones I like, you know, I, I do like, what was it? Was it the vice where, you know, we start at the, the end and kind of just move towards the middle. That's where I want to sit in the middle. So any points where, where I can kind of just sit there, like, I can say that, like, you have three across the board in, in some, um, you know, whether it's horizontal or diagonal, where I can just sit on two points um, and, and just kind of hunker down. Those those are those play the OBR really well. And, and that's and that's really good points. And I think that a lot, a lot of, I, I won't call it, OBR can be really elite. There's not, you know, even though you're eight drops, it's only eight units. And a lot of times it's like, I've always considered OBR an elitish army. You don't have to run them that way, but they don't spread out and hold all those points well. So that makes a lot of sense. All right. So if I'm a new player and I'm getting into OBR, I'm like, hey, I like the aesthetic. I like the background. I want to buy OBR. Um, what's your advice for these guys getting started? What should I? What should I buy? What should I look at? What should I know? I mean, that's a, that can be kind of a loaded question as well. I mean, you want to play for fun. Do you want to play competitive? If you're playing for fun and like the lore, just buy whatever, buy whatever strikes you, like whatever is going to keep you playing more and more and keep you in the hobby. It's like, go for that. Um, if you, if you're going competitive, um, you know, it's the guard, like, you know, the guard are staples, regardless of whether you run death riders or not, it's, you know, kind of get familiar with, the synergies and who does what and kind of think, do you want to be magic heavy? Do you want to just kind of control with Archon? Maybe you just throw in like a soul Mason and skip Archon altogether and you go melee heavy with Catacross or, you know, you you kind of see, you know, what do you want to do with, do you want to be the turtle? You want to be the castle? Do you want to be kind of more offensive and move around? Um, You know, those, those are going to be completely different lists. So there's not a quick and easy way to build your army, which is always something we look for. Hey, I start collecting a box set at this point. I think everything's out of print, probably waiting until they get a little revamp. um, If that happens this year or next. All right. So I'm an opponent and I'm coming to play you and I play X army. What advice are you, what, what should I know? What should I do to, to play an OBR? What are the things that I need to do to win? If you, if, if you have, I mean, if you're strong shooting, you could maybe pick and choose, but if, if you've got some decent shooting, ignore the guard, ignore the guard anyways. Like let, if, if they're coming for you, feed them, feed them chaff, feed them fodder, get rid of my heat, my supporting heroes. Can you shoot off my harvester or get rid of my harvester? That is a huge blow to me. Um, can you get rid of Archon? That's also a huge blow to be in between the two. It's only a three up and 21 wounds like a three up six up and 21 wounds to get rid of both of them that's not that hard to get through especially through one or you know two or three turns um with my crawler i'd probably say if you can bomb across the field and get something in combat with the crawler you shut it down because it's got a six to 36 range so there's very few units that have a base 
more than six inches that I could shoot if it's locked in combat. Um, but other than that, I would just ignore it. You know, you may eat 10, 15 wounds on one turn, probably unlikely, but it, it could happen. Um, but it's, it's my support pieces. It's the harvester, it's Archon. Uh, I wouldn't even worry about catacos either, but get rid of those. And you've really taken a lot of what I can do out because I'm not going to be as, um, I'm not going to be able to stand up as much to, to what you're doing. I'm not going to come back as quickly and you'll, you'll wear through me a lot quicker than otherwise I, I, I may be there at full health by the time the game ends. And I'll go back to my old Imperial guard tactic, which is pick a target and shoot it till it's dead. Sp- don't split fire. Don't split your attacks. If you're taking three units and you're trying to get cheeky, which I swear I tell myself never do it, never do it. And I do it every tournament. You have to kill the units. You have to kill it dead because mm. if you don't kill it dead. It's coming back to full or it's coming back almost to full health almost every time. So you have to, you have to overkill and you think every time you play OBR and, and a little bit like soul blight, but soul blight doesn't do it as good as OBR where it's like, well, I'm just going to split my attacks because math says I should put five here, five here, and five here. Don't put five. You put all 15 into the guards unit and hope you kill it. Because if you killed it, you're going to be, you're going to, you might feel bad that you didn't put a wound here or there, but you're going to feel a lot better than you would when next yeah. turn comes around and one model turns back into 10 and you're back to square one and you did nothing. So just overkill everything because you can't bring back a unit that's wiped, right? Exactly. And I don't even roll until the end. So if I have a block of 10 guard, you do 10 wounds. I don't save any of those. I don't get to roll and bring them back. That that happens. They have to all live through the, the allocations and have one model left that I can return it to. So if you can, that's the thing is, if you can take out a guard unit, go all in. Just make sure it's dead and gone. Um, so you want to look for things that aren't next to a crawler. Um, I mean, not a crawler, but a, a harvester for sure. Um, and with what you said about splitting attacks, I'm... Um, Every now and then I'll get risky too, maybe high reward, you know, high risk, high reward play. But law of large numbers says that statistically this will work, but I'm not rolling that many dice. So uh, the, the chance for it to not work out is, is, is a lot greater than, you know, simple math that states, says that it is. All right. Did um, any closing thoughts, anything you wanted to share that we missed about uh, Bone Reapers? Um, comments on the meta where they're at how they're acting how you play them i mean we cover everything obr to be honest doesn't seem like a giant book it's sort of condensed there's not a ton of units and it seems like the units that you don't take no one ever talks about that much um so is there any other thoughts you have on it uh a couple one um you know hopefully at a slambo it'll be a hundred obr because i just changed the meta um and then i'll take daughters and have fun and clean up um but uh, so I, I wanted to talk a bit about Mortis Praetorian and why I chose them over Petrifact. So I just uh, caught the, I know the the Harambe heroes, they, they put out kind of like a before and after. So I just caught their before like earlier today because I didn't see it come up. Uh, so Brian Lofton was, was talking about the list and made a comment about Petrifacts over Mortis Praetorian. So um, normally I was Mortis, I mean, Petrifacts elite. It's like, okay, I get to ignore Rend. I don't have to put up above. I don't have to worry about if it's 36 or 18 inches. Um, you know, that's just automatic. Plus their, their command ability for being Petrifax is give a unit minus, you know, a bonus to the rent, which is huge as far as, you know, getting through um, things like, uh, you know, big heroes, like a mock crusher comes in. If I can hit it with two rent versus one, like that's, that's pretty big. Um, Giant but, uh, megas, yeah. uh, find that two rent on a mega, yeah. they just don't like that at all. Right. Because then, the, you know, the chance of the damage going through is so much higher. And for things like Giants, I need it dead, like, now. I, I can't I can't wait two or three turns to, to really get through it. Um, but the, the last local I played, uh, I, I was I was there as Daughters. Uh, Matt was there just, uh, he I think he came up just to play me because he wanted to play his OBR against Daughters just as a practice match. So he he did, like, a fill-in, and we played, and we talked. He was more just Praetorian, too. And, you know, he said a few things that really stuck with me is, one, you know, Minus one rent or plus one safe. They're essentially the same thing, right? But they're they're not really when you fight against things with no rent. So um, me getting off that plus one save and my units getting into things against no rent, that's so much better than than having the the ignore one rent because now they're a full three up instead of uh, ignoring a rent that that doesn't exist. Um, 
And then I can always use Mystic Shield to pick and choose a, a unit to kind of give them that extra protection. Um, the second thing is their command ability, uh, Counter-Strike lets you uh, use it in the, the end of the charge phase. And that's huge for OBR because typically I have a lot of RDP left over. Uh, Mortis Praetorian um, lets me use this at the end of the charge phase. So I can use this and still shield wall or use this and still do endless duty. So it gets, lets me... Uh, pick a unit and they can reroll their hit, hit against any unit that charged. Um, so, you know, it, it, there's situational when you use it. Um, but, you know, being able to reroll, you know, hit on twos with Catacrosis buff, rerolling uh, the ones, like that, that's a lot of extra attacks that, that can get through. So, um, but I can still shield wall or I can still endless duty with that too. And to me, that's, that's pretty important. Uh, otherwise I could only do one of, I'd have to pick or choose one of those and because I can't stack them in the same phase. Um, but if you don't have Catacross, then definitely it's Petrifex Elite. So, all right. So Petrifex, if you don't have Catacross, but y you make a great point and you actually commented to me, I think we were at the, um, at the, at the tournament and we were talking something and I made it brought that up. And, and I want to say that's when you told me that you, you, that comment of against Ren, nothing, your Petrifex isn't a buff. You know, it's like, no. just like you're saying, it's a buff in Mortis when you're against the majority of fodder army. I mean, you look around, there's so much with no rend. That's a lot of, you know, obviously if you're going up against monsters, you're going up elite. There, most of them have a heavy, they have a, a rend. But yeah, and that's a great point because those guards are going to see a ton of pink horrors. They're going to see witches. They're going to see a lot of stuff that, you know, doesn't have a rend. And giving them a three up save, re-rolling is pretty good math. Even still, so you can't do shield wall in the shooting phase, but against no rent shots, a three up versus a four up is a big change. So, you know, looking at it across, you know, the game um, and every turn and round, I really like the, the bonus to save versus the ignoring the one rent. All right. So is there anything else you got? And that's a super great piece of tech and advice. So everybody go out and buy Catacross. Yeah, go get put Catacross. Him, put him in the middle of your board put two blocks of 20 uh more tech guard around him and then one harvester and then you can and one and and one uh catapult and then whatever points you got left you can do whatever you want for flavor yeah you won't be able to bring that many guard but you know you, you're gonna probably have them separate but you, you want catacross and dig to, to get into the fights he can do some damage he gets better as he takes damage and then heals back up um but he's he's also a good way to block off people from uh, units from getting into like the harvester or the archon that's behind your line all right so, so there it is guys um there's some great input from a really good obr player right now i know that right now they've sort of it feels like they fell out of the meta a little bit but i played them at a recent tournament against brian was running them and they totally stonewalled my doc um Part of that's mm -hmm. me not knowing how to play Doc, but part of that was rolls, and part of that is just that they can suck up so much damage. They're not bad right now. So, guys, I know there's a ton of people out there with OBR sitting on the shelf. I think it's the time to bring them back to the table, give them a test run, see how you feel, because I think they're coming back. I think they're not as they, – they're not C-tier anymore. They've made some gains. Definitely. Uh, but what I'm not looking forward to is OBR versus OBR matches. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's just a lot of dice rolling and nothing really happening, I think. Pretty much, yeah. That That's a, let's roll a, a dice on a four-up you win. Let's go have a beer and we'll just skip the next three hours. All right, guys. Well, that does it for this episode. I want to thank, uh, thank you uh, for coming out and listening to us rant and rave about OBR. And as always, y'all be good.